Hi, I'm just popping in here to make sense of the video you're about to watch. Clearly, the last few weeks I have been at my parents' house and I continue to be there and I will continue to be there long after this. But I have a video here that I filmed a while ago back when I was still in my flat. So just so you don't get confused and think I've gone back home, we're going back in time. Please enjoy the video. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Drinking by My Shelf. I'm here to do the exact reverse of the video I did last week. So this time I am looking at the 10 worst rated books on my Goodreads Red Shelves and I'm going to react to those. Again, full credit for this idea. I saw it on Lauren's channel. So yeah, this is not my idea, but I really like watching these. So tell me if you did it because I will watch it. So let's go straight into it. I've got my Goodreads Red Shelf here sorted by average rating in reverse and the absolute worst rated book on my Goodreads is Choose Your Own Love Story Adventures in Dating. I think that's a bit mean. It's got an average rating of 2.77 so I remember this book. This was like a choose your adventure story um, but it was all about romance so you got to kind of pick what you did on dates and then like flip to the right page. I mean you know how a choose your own adventure story works. It was that but for grown-ups and it was all about dating. Um, and I mean, I don't remember loving this book. I thought it was fine, but I think that's harsh to give it a 2.7. It was definitely good fun. I enjoyed it. So this book actually featured in like a really early video on my channel, which I'll try and find and link below. I think this was like my first ever reading vlog when I went to Greece with my family and I read seven books in seven days or nine books in nine days, something like that. Um, and one of them was that book. So, you know, I was kind of cheating because it was really quick and easy, but I'll link to that video. Um, and I haven't rewatched it, so I can't remember what I said about it in that video, but hopefully I said something interesting. Okay, the next bottom on my shelf is Maestra by L.S. Hilton. Oh, I'm so glad to see that one there. I hated this book. Again, these are books that were in my, like, early days on YouTube. I think this one was a Snapchat book review. I used to do that. Before I did booktube, I would do Snapchat book reviews, and then I started uploading them to YouTube, so I will link to that below. I hated it. I thought I was going to love it. This one is kind of similar to um, The Girl in 6E in that it's a book about murder and sex and all the ingredients that I should love, but it was just too much for me. I remember just being bored with it and I love an unlikable main character and like, you know, by unlikable I mean like really dark. I love anti-heroes, but this character was one that I just couldn't like relate to or engage with in any way because she was just so ridiculous. I remember it having like quite a cringe use of referencing like Instagram and Snapchat in ways that like didn't quite work so it felt like it was trying to be a bit too down with the kids. I just remember hating everything about this book. So yep, agreed with that one. Again, oh my god, did these people like look at my Snapchat book reviews? The next lowest book is The Painted Ocean by Gabriel Packard, which again I did a Snapchat book review of and again I hated. We, I feel like, me and the public are in so much more agreement on this one. In the last video, a lot of the top rated books were ones that I like didn't particularly care about, whereas I'm agreeing with all of these. The Painted Ocean, I did not get on with at all. It was one of those books I think was supposed to be really profound and literary and I just didn't get it. Maybe that's my bad, but also could have done a better job of helping me get it. So it's partly at the beginning, just about this young girl in like suburban, middle England, um, it's very much except in reality, it's about her life, about her parents, their, the breakup of their marriage, it's about her being bullied, like experiences of being Indian at a mostly white school, and she makes friends with this other girl and they go on a trip together, and then the trip just like turns into complete disaster, it's like they get stuck on this island, maybe one of the girls leaves her there, I can't quite remember, um, and suddenly it's like a fight for her life, and it's like so beyond reality, which is fun, I like that kind of thing, but it was such a tone shift halfway through, and it also felt the whole way through like it was supposed to mean something, I was supposed to be getting something from it that I just wasn't. So I remember it being like super page turning, like I couldn't put it down, I was hooked, but I also was like, I don't know what any of this is for. Oh, this one I really think is mean. So the next lowest rated is Gingerbread by Helen Iyemi. So here it is, I have this one. I loved this book. I mean, I can see, I can understand why it's not more popular because it is very strange. Helen Iyemi's writing is an acquired taste. It is very unusual, it is very surreal. This isn't a book that I go around recommending to like tons of people. I'm quite specific with who I would recommend this one to. So I can see why it's not like super highly rated, but I'm surprised to see it that lowly rated because I would have thought that maybe the kind of people who pick up Helen Iyemi books already kind of know what they're in for because it is quite clear on the back 
how strange it's going to be. This is essentially a kind of Hansel and Gretel inspired surreal story about three generations of this family who make this gingerbread and I had to read it twice to understand it. The first time I read it I just did not know what was going on, the second time I read it I adored it and now I really want to read it again, like, there's something so intoxicating about it. I'm a big fan of Helen Iommi even though reading her books does feel more like work than some other reading experiences do because you are like trying to figure out what is going on but it's like it's just enchanting it's like intoxicating her writing fifth from the bottom is the voices by fr talis again i think this one's harsh i mean this was a book i gave like a three to but it's fun it's a horror story so this is about a married couple who've just had a baby um, it's set in the 70s and the wife starts to hear these creepy voices on the baby monitor so she's really scared by it the husband, who is a like music composer for films, finds it really exciting. He gets like really weirdly obsessed with these voices because he finds that he can record them and like make new music or new soundscapes that involve these ghostly voices. And it's about them both just kind of like descending into madness throughout this summer with these voices. And it is weird. It isn't like the best horror story I've ever read, but I really enjoyed it. I found it really page turning. So I wouldn't put it that low down my list. Haha! <laughs> the next on this list is Pretty Is by Maggie Mitchell. <laughs> That's really funny because I did a video recently where I reread some of my like least enjoyed books. Um, books that I had originally given one star to and I reread them and one of them was Pretty Is and I still didn't like it. The video was called crap books that are still crap so I will link to that and yeah I agree that one just wasn't good. It was so close to being good I think that was what was annoying about this one is that I was actually enjoying it most of the way through and the ending was just so disappointing that it like retrospectively wiped the rest of the book from being good. The next one is Whistle in the Dark by Emma Healy and this is one I think is harsh I gave that one four stars. So Emma Healy wrote Elizabeth is Missing is that right? Which I loved which in the dark I didn't like quite as much as that, but I still really enjoyed it. It's about a girl who goes missing, then she's found, but she kind of has no memories of where she was. So it's sort of a mystery, but it's also just sort of more about exploring her relationship with her mother and the build up to her going missing and the things that were going wrong in their relationships and like the way that they can then fix it. So I thought it was a really nice book, gave it four stars. It wasn't what I expected when I picked it up, which is maybe why it's quite low rated is because I think if you were picking it up wanting it to be this thriller that isn't quite what it delivered on it was a slightly different type of book but I was okay with that. I think we're on number eight now which is The Favourite Sister by Jessica Knoll. Again this is one that I think is a bit harsh. I liked this book I gave it four stars. So Jessica Knoll wrote previously Luckiest Girl Alive which was a fantastic book. I think I gave that one five stars. I really liked that. The Favourite Sister I didn't enjoy quite as much as that but I thought it was really fun. It's a very strange book. It is very like controversial. Like, controversial topics come up in this so be prepared for that. Um, it's definitely like dancing those lines of, of what's okay to talk about, what's okay to have happen in a book. Um, but it was, I, I thought it was good. So it's about this reality show that is marketed as this like feminist reality show because it's about strong business women. But it's still just as much as any other reality show about pitting these women against each other. Like, the producers know exactly what they're doing. And two of the cast members are sisters. And we know from the beginning that one of them gets murdered by the end of the season. So then we kind of rewind and like watch that season unfold and see what happens. So this is one that I think would work so well as a TV show because you could actually like watch it as a reality show. I really enjoyed it. I guess I can understand why it might be quite low down is because of those controversial issues. A lot of people might take issue with it. When I read it, I definitely was like, wow, she went there. Um, but for me, it erred on the right side. Erred on the right side? Erred on the right side. I don't actually know how to pronounce that word. Whatever the word is, it was on the right side of that for me, even though it was like dangerous territory. The next one is The Well by Catherine Chanter. So that's really interesting to see that there. Because again, this is what I've talked about really recently. I did that video where I picked the next books I was going to read based on the first lines and then like reacted to them later. I will link to that below. And one of the books I reacted to was The Well by Catherine Chanter. And this was a book that I was really mixed on my feelings of. I gave it a three star, but I also really want to reread it because it was one of those that you just can't quite work out how you feel. I was partly, while reading this book, a bit bored, but I was also partly like really enthralled. It's very unusual. It's about cult and I love things about cults. It's this just like 
eerie rather than thrilling thriller. Um, very slow moving, but it's about this woman who has been accused of murdering her grandson, and it's kind of about the cult that she was kind of inadvertently involved in, how that might have led to the death of her grandson. So it's this really interesting story, executed in a way that didn't quite work for me because I wasn't that gripped, but left me thinking about it afterwards. So again, I guess I can understand why that one is low rated because I did only give it a three, but oh, I'm definitely going to end up picking it up and rereading it and then still not liking that much and finding that was a total waste of my time. And then finally, the 10th lowest rated book that I've read is Buried Alive by Jacqueline Wilson. And finally, I can't really remember anything about this book. I read a lot of Jacqueline Wilson when I was growing up and I loved her. So I'm sure I loved this book as well, but I can't specifically remember this one. So maybe it wasn't her best. This is the second in the adventure series. This one says it's about a guy called Tim who goes on a quiet holiday in Wales with his best friend who's called Biscuits. Love that. Um, I've absolutely no recollection of that book at all. Does anyone read Buried Alive? Can you remind me what it's about? Because apparently I have read it, but that would have been like 20 years ago. As a whole though, Jacqueline Wilson is great and doesn't deserve to be anywhere near the lowest rated on anyone's shelves because I kind of worship her. So let me know if you've read any of those and if you agree or disagree with the ratings. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button below for new videos every week. Cheers.